Huzzah! I don't have to speak about Boss Baby 2 today. That was the original plan that was in our schedule set like ages ago. I mean, I even hinted it a couple times in videos, but I guess early 2021 still just isn't the time for it. So while sometimes movies are coming out and other times a film is delayed a full two years on, thank God, let's instead use this open slot to discuss the movies that never saw the light of day, except now it will. Popeye! Look at this art style, it's the perfect bait for viral YouTube videos. Well, it is a viral YouTube video, kinda makes sense really. Released back in 2014, this was a representation of a real project, and if you couldn't already tell by the style, it's got that Hotel Transylvania vibe all over. Because it is Hotel Transylvania. Or shall I say, it was produced by pretty much the same people. This unreleased Popeye movie was a proposed film to be made by those wishy-washy guys over at Sony Pictures Animation, and the director of this short is the actual director of the three, or I guess going on four, Hotel Transylvania movies. And though Sony Pictures Animation does get a lot of slack, if I'm being totally honest, I really dig this clay-like slapstick style. And for translating an archaic 2D animation icon, I think it works pretty much immaculately. So what's going on? What happened back in 2014 that led us to talking about it now? Also be sure to stick around in this video as I've got a new announcement I'm excited to reveal a little later on. So, this video wasn't a preview. Through the words of the director himself, it's not a clip, it's not a trailer, it's nothing from the actual movie, it's just something that kind of represents what we wanted to do. It was just kind of a demo, a proof of concept idea, and boy did it take off. At the time of writing this, the video smashed beyond 20 million views across several different channels, and people were hyped for it. With so many other old school icons reimagined and brought into the next century, to varying degrees of success I guess, this seemed like a great outlet for Popeye to work too. And it's been a while since we saw him as a mainstream character. Planning to be helmed by director Gendy Tartakovsky, previously known for all sorts of legendary works like Samurai Jack, Dexter's Laboratory, Hotel Transylvania of course, and really a good chunk of my Cartoon Network childhood, this guy's earned both Emmy and Annie awards for his stuff, so clearly he's a big deal. This Popeye project was first announced back in 2012 and brewed for a good two years until that sneak peek premise short thing came out. Though the premise of the actual plot remains unknown, it didn't really matter. With it being a revival of Popeye, it was likely to not stir too vastly out of the established standards, just it'll just be in movie form, you know? Though there's certainly been a lot of variations for Popeye over the decades. With Popeye debuting in a 1929 comic strip, the guy has been about for 92 years. Whether he's having a battle of wits against his rival in a love triangle with Bluto, fawning over love interest Olive Oil, defending her from pirates aboard his ship, handling a baby version of himself or an elderly one, the biggest trademark consistently after a bit of time tying every cannon together, only came with his pipe as a versatile tool and a can of spinach to get out of every sticky situation. I was wondering how one would tackle the obvious tobacco controversy on such a child-friendly character, but apparently he hasn't used the pipe to actually smoke since the 70s, so I guess it's already solved. It could just do everything else instead. Huh. So while the story didn't really matter, the other details we did have for this project was that casting choices for at least the demo had voice icon Tom Kenny, who you probably know mostly as SpongeBob SquarePants, how fitting for an ocean tale, though he's also done all sorts of other things too. Video games and cartoon series galore. I don't even think I can properly quantify with my words how much stuff this guy has contributed to, so I'm just gonna let you scroll through the IMDB page for a minute. And then for the role of Olive Oil, by the way, I just... I love the name, went to Grey DeLizzle. A little less prevalent on her IMDb page, but it certainly seemed to work for the short. You don't need celebrities everywhere. This is a well-known opinion of mine. So where did things start going wrong? Well, it's a handful of things, but the true inciting incident began with the hacking scandal of 2014 on Sony Pictures. Did you know about this? So what was going on was that the studio was hacked by a group calling itself the Guardians of Peace, and this was in response to Seth Rogen's upcoming and awfully controversial movie, The Interview. This project was a comedy about a couple of guys getting the opportunity to give an interview with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and with the CIA moving in to attempt an assassination on him. Yeah, not really 
really where I was expecting to go when digging up about a Popeye project. Anyway, the hacking group wanted the movie to be pulled from release. It never was. Still, it caused a rupture in the studio and led to a loss of focus on many of its other projects, including Popeye. From here, Sony Pictures decided to reshuffle itself, with some of the biggest changes being to go for the president of Sony Pictures Digital Productions, Bob Osher, and his enabler and controversy ridden co-chair Amy Pascal, and replacing them with former DreamWorks producer Christine Belson as president of Sony Pictures Animation going onwards. With a mix-up on the higher levels, all sorts of projects were re prioritized too. So far sounding like good news to distance away from political relations and firing racially insensitive people, but the actual business decisions that followed caused a great upset in fans. But first, here's what Tartakovsky had to say when choosing to lead the project in 2015. We had a proof of concept, we had an amazing story reel all done that everybody loved, the whole studio was excited and the marketing was gearing up. But then the hack happened. The executives were dealing with so much and all this ugliness came out and it was just the wrong place at the wrong time for the Popeye movie. And with that, Gendy Tartakovsky went on to completing Hotel Transylvania 2 instead, as well as his own original Can You Imagine, which also never saw the light of day. And Sony said nothing. But in its place, another movie was released. One said to be either a massive viral hit with an encapsulating appeal, or a dumpster fire of a jaded view on the public. Yes, I still can't avoid this movie. What followed next and came to replace the Popeye movie was in fact the Emoji Movie. What a disaster. Jax Films' marketing meme was literally like the only redeeming factor. It was of course critically panned and an overall failure. Also since you've made it halfway, here's that new stuff I wanted to talk about. Streams are back with a better structure. From now on, we'll be streaming every Wednesday covering all movie trailers and news and anything else live for that week, and then whatever else I feel like doing afterwards. More content basically, and it'll be edited down onto our second channel. Linked as cards and end screens going forward, so keep an eye on them. It'll also be interspersed in the hashtag Dad's Reviews link under every video. Also, since you're here, join the rise of subscribers, give us a multiplier boost, check out my other links, and just thanks for making it this far in. I hope you like the extra work I'm putting together. But despite not releasing, Popeye was seen as certainly a somewhat success story in comparison to the Emoji Movie. Other quotes from the director say as such. With Popeye at least, we put up a great screening, everybody really liked that sizzle, we got a positive reaction. I was in love with what we were doing. It was hard to let let Popeye go, but that's the business. There were other factors to the cancellation of Popeye, such as creative differences on whether to translate Popeye or reimagine him anew with like sunglasses and a backwards hat or something or other. But generally, Sony's bigger issue caused the downfall of this small project. But while many people had things to say about its cancellation, Sony itself never said anything. And from an official standpoint, Popeye was never announced to be over. Instead, it just lay dormant, stuck in a purgatory of active development. And now, four years on from its original release date of 2016, five years on from being permanently paused, six years since that old sneak peek and eight years post announcement, that slick Popeye movie is coming back. Though we're calling it uncancelled on the channel because my different series merged too much anyway and I retired the coming back series. That being said, there's a few caveats to this revival revival. For a start, this animated Popeye is being reworked with King's Features Syndicate. These guys are made for the ancient animations of the Fleischer era. They're the ones who own the Popeye brand, along with all sorts of other classic cartoons and comic strips like Betty Boop, Flash Gordon, The Phantom, Beetle Bailey, and Mandrake the Magician. I'll admit, it's just a tad before my time personally. But still, things are moving ahead. And more to that, Gendy Tartakovsky is back on board too, as of May of 2020. King Features as a small animation studio have been best known for creating projects based around classic cartoons, and now this massive Popeye project is back on the menu. For the character's 90th anniversary in 2018, it was these guys who released a series of 2D animation shorts entitled Popeye's Island Adventures on YouTube. A tad different to the usual canon, but hey, it's a 90 year old IP at this point. King Features are also the guys working on the Cuphead Netflix show on the side too. They're just your go-to 1930s-esque animation studio. So one way or another, I'm certainly keeping an eye on these guys. But while hype is likely to be in overdrive after the impression of that old Sony 
demo, it should be noted that this is being reproduced from the ground up, and though Tartakovsky is back, they're starting all over again. And it is worth noting that it will also not be necessarily sharing the same style as that Sony test for the material. But you can expect with the same director and the obvious impact that the original take took, there will be a good bit of influence to do Popeye as we would probably like to see him. Though there's no word yet on what stage of development exactly this redone Popeye production is at, we do know the movie is set for release in 2022 and was re-announced just a year ago, so Pandemic was somewhat in mind still. Popeye over the last century has appeared in all sorts of formats, starting as a comic strip, moving to theatres when Max Fleischer adapted the comic stories into animated shorts, featuring in comic books, video games and adverts, as well as all sorts of cartoon TV shows of different canons and movies too. There's the 1980s movie with Robin Williams, maybe not one of his best works but still, as well as another attempted 3D CGI animated movie that I found. Uh, could do with a bit of work. But with just a few years off from that 100 year old milestone, it'll be interesting to see what form Popeye will take now. I'm sure we're all pretty into the idea of that super stretchy slapstick style, if not because it's just nice to see something at least slightly new for something so old. But who knows? Over the years, things have certainly been shaken up, so I guess everything's a little up in the air. At the very least, I'm sure we can all agree that anything is better than the Emoji Movie. Maybe we'd be in a better timeline if this released in 2016 as planned instead. Whatever the case, we'll add it to the list of upcoming movies to keep an eye on, and try our best to burn the Emoji Movie out from our memories. For now though, I'm gonna end it off here. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, check out our new stream starting this Wednesday for more movie stuff. Next week we'll be talking about a growing trend in the industry related to the next major film releasing this year, and I'll see you in a bit. God, that outro was a bit of a mouthful.